this very great event for this country. As chairperson of the CCM in the Secretary for Health, I indeed welcome you. It's exciting that we are engaging in this new process where the Global Fund moves around uh, countries and officially signs and launches the various grants. But before we proceed, uh, let me make a few uh, introductions of some of the dignitaries uh, who are here. And I will introduce them in no particular uh, order. And um, I think they can wave their hand so that you see who I am making reference to. We are privileged to have in our midst the American ambassador uh, to Zimbabwe, uh, His Excellency Harry Thomas Jr. We are also pleased to have the French ambassador to Zimbabwe, His Excellency uh, Richard Boyd. We are pleased to have the ambassador to Zimbabwe, Her Excellency Katriona Leng, but who is represented today uh, by the DAFID acting head, Dr. Joanne Abbott. We all know our UN resident coordinator and UNDP resident representative, Mr. Bishop Parajuli. And from the Global Fund itself, we do have the head of grant management division, uh, Mr. Mark Eddington. And he is accompanied by the head uh, of High Impact Africa II uh, Department, uh, Lyndon Morrison. The vice chair of the CCM, Dr. Alva uh, Senderai, is here. We also do have all, most of our CCA members here present. We have development partners who are sitting amongst yourselves, and we have various levels of recipients who are also seated amongst yourself. Last but not least, we have our guest of honor who I will introduce right away. There is the Honorable Minister of Health and Child Care, Dr. Pagwesese David Parrinyato. <laughs> so, as I indicated, we are here really for the grant launch for uh, our country, um, and we have requested a few of the dignitaries to just come and make a few remarks so that we get to understand what is happening, what is their perception uh, of our grants and um, where we are headed to. Uh, but before I do that, I think I omitted um, one more important introduction. The Office of the President of the Cabinet is represented uh, in this event and the representative who has come is Ambassador Mobi. Can you stand, please, Ambassador Mori? Thank you very much. You are welcome. So to proceed, may I start by inviting our Bishop um, Parajuli to come and just give us a few remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Director of Ceremony, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, uh, Major General, uh, Dr. Gwindi. Uh, I want to start by saying good afternoon to everyone uh, present here. Uh, a long list of salutations, uh, but just maybe to address some uh, Honorable Minister of Health and Child Care, uh, Dr. David uh, Parinato, uh, Honorable Minister of Finance, expected here but not yet, uh, uh, Mr. Patrick Chinamasa, Permanent Secretary for Minister of Health, of course, uh, Dr. Gwenji, I just mentioned, uh, 
Ambassador His Excellency Harry Thomas Jr., Ambassador uh, His Excellency Richard uh, Burden, uh, the GIF DFID uh, Acting Head uh, Dr. Joe Abbott, uh, uh, Head of the Global Front Grant Management Division Mark Eddington, as well as uh, Lyndon Morrison, uh, Vice Chair of the CCM, Dr. Alva uh, Sendai, and CCM members, senior government officials uh, present here, partners, uh, development partners, uh, uh, friends, colleagues from the UN, uh, system, media, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is really a big honor for, and pleasure to participate in this historic event marking the Zimbabwe launch of uh, uh, this Global Fund grant for the allocation utilization period 2018 and 20. Uh, on behalf of the United Nations family, allow me to really congratulate very sincerely the government of Zimbabwe and in particular Ministry of Health and the Child Care and the Health Development Partners for this great achievement uh, in effectively responding to HIV, TB and malaria and securing uh, over $500 million new funding from the Global Fund for the next three years. This is uh, not a simple achievement uh, and uh, it's, making, it's going to make a big difference in life of hundreds of thousands of people. I would also like to thank the Global Fund for all the financial support they have given to the country, including the a new three-year funding. Our big appreciation and gratitude is also the Global Fund donors uh, for their support to the program in Zimbabwe. Uh, given the challenges facing Zimbabwe, the success of Global Fund support to the health sector has been remarkable, especially when we think that the Global Fund has contributed uh, to the over one million people who are currently on antiviral, antiretroviral treatment. We also acknowledge the tremendous support the Global Fund has given to the country to strengthen the health system, human resources, financial management, health information, supply chain, among others. The UN system as such uh, and, and the principal uh, administrator of the fund, UNDP, are proud to be a strategic partner in managing the Global Fund grant and supporting the three diseases, malaria, TB, HIV, and other health support. Uh, through the strategic partnership. Uh, we have contributed and brought towards innovation through the new technology, for example, SORA for health, viral load uh, bundling, etc. Capacity strengthening in public finance management, supply chain system, uh, internal audit, accounting, transparency, ensuring value for money and significant savings through efficient and effective procurement and supply chain and low management cost. Uh, provided prevention options for communities and individuals and address the need of key affected population. Uh, it is truly a joint effort on our side and we commit to continue our support to the three diseases in all the ways possible and broad, broaden health system improvement in general. As Zimbabwe launches these three grants today, I want to emphasize the importance of the voice of the people living with or affected by the diseases and making continuous effort uh, in preventing uh, this illness. Finally, let me again express our big appreciation and gratitude and encouragement, the commitment shown by the government of Zimbabwe today by organizing this event, uh, uh, Ending HIV, AIDS, TB, malaria in Zimbabwe cannot happen without a strong uh, government leadership and commitment. The presence of ministers, senior government officials, and all stakeholders shows the seriousness of the effort from everyone uh, in addressing this illness and working together. Together, we will end at AIDS, TB, malaria, and also help improve health system in Zimbabwe. I thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Bisho uh, Parajuli. May I now invite uh, Ambassador Harry Thomas Jr. to come and share his thoughts. Thank you.
Good afternoon. <clears throat> Dr. David Paranyatwa, Minister of Health and Child Care, representatives from the Global Fund, distinguished partners, members of the diplomatic community, all protocols observed. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this ceremony. In my second year in Zimbabwe, I had the rare opportunity to interact with adolescent girls and young women under one of PEPFAR's flagship initiatives, DREAMS. It stands for Determined, Resilient, Empowered, AIDS-Free, Mentored, and Safe. I am fascinated by the success of this initiative as reported by beneficiaries. Sitadankile Chilenji is an 18-year-old beneficiary of the DREAMS initiative under Safe Aids in Bulawayo. She is proud of how the DREAMS initiative has enabled her to know her status and acquire useful skills to generate an income. She is now in better position to make decisions that help her remain safe from acquiring HIV. She weaves baskets and can even make you marmalade jam. She sells these products and can now take care of her basic needs. Most importantly, she does not go out looking for sugar daddies, blessers, I believe is the term we use here in Zimbabwe, <laughs> who often take advantage of poor girls in need. The DREAMS initiative is transforming the lives of many beneficiaries. And with more resources, like the grant we're signing today, even more lives can and will be saved. Like the Global Fund, PEPFAR is about saving lives. And we take this very seriously. Through our strengthened partnerships with the government of Zimbabwe, shall I say the new government of Zimbabwe, Mr. Minister, more lives will be saved. My government and the Global Fund have become complementary, interdependent, and together have leveraged resources to attain substantial results in changing the global trajectory in HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. Let me congratulate the minister and his ministry for its leadership in engaging partners and developing strategies that are transparent, evidence-based, and effective in mitigating the spread of HIV. Zimbabwe's success and leadership in breaking the cycle of HIV and AIDS has placed it among the five high burden African countries on the path towards epidemic control. That fact truly deserves a round of applause. <laughs> the United States government believes that epidemic control can only be achieved by addressing the unique HIV prevention and care needs of all individuals. That's why I'm glad to know that this grant has secured matching funds that are earmarked towards improving access to comprehensive services for key populations, which includes men who have sex with men, female sex workers, and young adolescent girls like Zita Candile, whom I mentioned earlier. They will surely benefit from this grant. This will ensure that we are in sync with the UN AIDS leave no one behind principle. We believe that through transparency, accountability, and the power of partnership, these resources can accelerate progress, even within the context of financial constraints and economic challenges. The United States government applauds Zimbabwe for developing a technically sound proposal and being a successful early applicant to the new global funding model. Grant accountability has also fared well as ne 
Nicole Daniel Petrescu, and the Office of the Inspector General can attest. And we are proud to be associated with such performance. The United States is pleased with its long-standing relationship with the Global Fund. And we are proud to be the largest contributor, pledging over four billion US dollars during the fifth replenishment period. While we celebrate the signing of this grant, let us keep in mind the need for sustainability to maintain gains achieved. I want to acknowledge the efforts Zimbabwe is making towards sustainability, and I urge the Zimbabwean government to prioritize increased domestic financing for health and in particular for the HIV response. We have a historic opportunity to end HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. So let me recognize and thank all the stakeholders and say well done, Zimbabwe. Uh, before I conclude, I have I think 30 seconds, Major General. Um, I would like to say on behalf of our embassy, uh, my government, and the American people, that we have tremendous respect for Zimbabwe, for the African continent, its people, its culture, its traditions. The immigrants to America from Africa, particularly from Zimbabwe, are among our highest achieving people. And I just want to say, that from the bottom of our hearts, we are part of you, we are part of the global community, and we have nothing but respect for you, and we welcome you to our shores as visitors or as residents. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Thomas, for sharing your thoughts, defects, and some life stories. We thank the U.S. government for its continued contribution to our health system through its various agencies as well as through the Global Fund. Let me now invite uh, Mr. Richard Boydin, the French ambassador to Zimbabwe, say, can you come and make your remarks? What can I say after Harry Thomas? <laughs> it's difficult. So let's try. Honorable Minister of Health and Child Care, David paris Renatwa, Honorable Minister of Finance and Economic Development, expected Mr. Patrick Shinabaza. Mr. Permanent Secretary for Health and Child Care and Zimbabwe CCM Major General Gerald Gwinji. His Excellency and friend, Harry Thomas. His Excellency, Katriona Lang, represented by defeat deputy head, Johanny Habot. The UN represent coordinator and also a friend, Bishop Parajoli. And of the Global Fund Grant Management Division, Mr. Mark Eddington. Members of the GF mission team, Ed Hyde Impact Africa II Department, Mr. Morrison, Vice Chair of the CCM, Dr. Serenderai, CCM members, government officials, partners, and developing partners, ladies and gentlemen. As you can imagine, it's a great pleasure to attend this ceremony with all of you. On this occasion, I would like to commend the CCM Chair, all CCM members, and all the stakeholders who have joined their efforts to elaborate the proposal regarding this new allocation of the Global Fund to Zimbabwe for 2017 to 2019. I would like to point out the constant commitment of the French representative to the CCM, Laurent Godefroy, who is here. Stand up, please. You, you, have, you have to know he makes the job, not me. <laughs> I would like to thank as well the Global Fund Land and his team who guide our work. France has always committed itself to promote an universal right to health. The fight against HIV remains one of its main priority. The French involvement includes several dimensions. We try to play our role, our role in the field of scientific research with the location of many research centers in developing countries. 
France also went forward for promoting the innovative financing based on a solidarity contribution on the flight tickets and on the tax on the financial transactions. Moreover, France is the second historical donor of the global fund behind United States of America. For 2017 to 2019, France will be the third donor behind USA and UK, providing around 13% of the resources of the global fund, that means 1 billion US dollars. For the next three years, and it's the French taxpayer money. <laughs> For the next three years, France will provide 65 million US dollars to Zimbabwe through the GF. In addition, France is providing 60% of the resources of, the United, of United, which is complementing the, act the action of the GF by detection and the treatment of HIV, TB, and malaria. Between 2006 and 2016, France has provided 27.6 million US dollars to Zimbabwe through United. Our effort will be pursued in the coming years. I have no doubt that this new contribution of the Global Fund to Zimbabwe will be used in the most efficient way. Zimbabwe, as Ambassador Harry Thomas said, has achieved significant progress in the recent years. Nevertheless, many challenges remain. One, pursuing the, reforms, the reinforcement of the health system. Second, increasing in a, in a significant way the part of the domestic financial allocation to health. Third, a better involvement of the local communities and a better involvement of CSO. But progresses of Zimbabwe are a reality and hope is now there. Let me underline that nothing would have been possible without the efficient coordination between the donors and the national authorities in the framework of the CCM. And as a representative of an European country, I'm also pleased that the real synergy between the CCM and the EU Health Development Fund now, has now occurred. To conclude, I would like to warmly thank and reiterate my full support to all the stakeholders and to reaffirm that France will always stand with Zimbabwe, or new Zimbabwe as you like, in the fight against HIV, TB, and malaria. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency Abouedin, for those remarks and for the immense contributions that you are making into our health system. Uh, directly as a bilateral partnership and through uh, the Global Fund as well. May I now invite the FID uh, head representative, uh, Dr. Joan Abbott, the only lady <laughs> who is sitting up front. <laughs> 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 Good afternoon, everybody. Um, let me recognise the presence of the Honourable Minister, Dr David Perignato, Minister of Health and Child Care, but I think you'll allow me to say all protocols observed as the third speaker for everybody else in this room. The UK is proud to stand alongside the US and France as the three biggest contributors to the Global Fund, which itself is the largest <coughs> development partner to health in Zimbabwe. The UK recognises that the Global Fund is one of the most important and effective instruments we have globally to end the three diseases as epidemics. For this reason, the UK pledged 1.1 billion to the fifth replenishment, of which 200 million was designed to attract private... Thank you, Honourable Minister for your remarks and sharing your thoughts and acknowledging the support that you are getting from the Global Fund, from other partners, as well uh, as from government. You spoke as Minister of Health and Child Care and local leader of the team that spoke before you and others. And you were all speaking about the grant. 
it is now my honor to get the grant to respond to your remarks. May I therefore invite Mark Eddington to come and give his remarks. Thank you. Thank you, PS, Honourable Minister, Ambassadors, distinguished guests, I think I'll follow the, the UK lead of saying all protocols observed. Thank you for inviting the Global Fund team to be part of this important event. The signing of grants of around $500 million for 2018-2020. I always look forward to visiting Zimbabwe it's a country that I first visited personally in, in 1989. I'd like to thank the CCM for leading an inclusive country dialogue process and for timely and successful submission of quality proposals to deliver the grants agreements that we confirm today. As a number of the speakers have highlighted, Zimbabwe has achieved significant gains in the fight against HIV, TB, and malaria, and in building resilient and sustainable health systems. In Zimbabwe, there are now more than one million people on ARV treatment. That's quite an achievement. HIV prevalence has decreased by, uh, by more than 28% over the last decade. TB incidence has dropped by nearly 60% over the same period. And an integrated electronic patient tracking system is now in place to monitor quality of care. We've seen great progress in the fight against malaria, with overall national malaria incidence falling drastically by 79% and mortality declining by 57% over the last few years. I'd like to thank the government of Zimbabwe for its leadership, the bilateral and multilateral partners, civil society, and all stakeholders represented here today for their contributions. I think it is important that everyone in Zimbabwe knows that the, the three governments represented, uh, US, UK, and France, here today, um, make up more than 50% of the funding for the Global Fund. So essentially, more than 50% of all the grants that Zimbabwe receives from us are from UK, US and France, so, so thank you. I'd also like to thank our other donors, um, including the EU private foundations and African governments, including Zimbabwe, for their financial support and technical guidance. I was in Lusaka yesterday for, for a similar signing ceremony. I, I just said to the Honourable Minister before the event that Zimbabwe's grants are a little higher than Zambia, so perhaps he could, he could keep that quiet when he meets with his colleague at the, at the next SADC <laughs> regional meeting. And I, I said to the, the Minister of, Ministers of Health and Finance, um, because Zambia also contributed to the last global fund replenishment, and I said, you know, it's incredibly important uh, when African countries put their own money on the table. It, it says something extremely strongly um, to our larger donors, that African governments value the Global Fund and therefore are prepared to put their own money in. And I'd like to thank Zimbabwe because you've, you've also done that. It's, it's, it's a very powerful uh, symbol. This partnership that is the Global Fund, and I think you see the partnership present here in the, in the room today, is bending the curve of the three diseases in Zimbabwe. As we seek to end these diseases as epidemics by 2030, we need to continue to work together in the same spirit. I was particularly impressed by the targets you have all set for the new grants in Zimbabwe. With these new agreements, we collectively will expand prevention, treatment, and support services to accelerate the effort to end these diseases as public health threats. We're confident that Zimbabwe will achieve the 1990 goal, make significant progress towards malaria elimination and further reduce TB incidents. The Global Fund will continue to look to Zimbabwe for its leadership in driving innovative approaches to maximize health outcomes. 
Honourable Minister, we particularly look forward to your leadership in HIV prevention as we work to reduce the rate of new infections in adolescents, both young women and men, and in other key populations. We also look to the Ministry of Health and partners, including PEPFAR, to lead the scale-up of differentiated care models, thereby allowing us all to optimize resources. Honourable Minister, partners and distinguished guests, Zimbabwe's ongoing leadership in domestic financing through the AIDS levy and in adapting innovative approaches to maximize health outcomes is most critical as we seek to optimize our collective investments. While the AIDS levy is commendable, much remains to be done in terms of increasing financial allocations to the health sector. And, and you spoke about that, Honorable Minister. Um, I'm sorry that the Honorable Minister for Finance is not here to, to hear that today, but I'm sure you'll communicate those words to it. I'd also like you to know, Honorable Minister, that I, I did do my best to contribute um, to the AIDS levy myself this morning. I, I tried to phone Lyndon six times in, on the car on the way in, but unfortunately I couldn't get a line. So. <laughs> but the, um, the effort was there. Um, <coughs> the Global Fund is committed to providing all the necessary support needed to ensure the effective implementation of the new grants over the next three years. And I'm confident, um, I've seen the results looking back, and I'm confident that looking forward, at the end of this implementation period, Zimbabwe will be well on the way to ending these epidemics, which will have a fundamental impact on development and social change in the country. Honorable ministers, distinguished guests, allow me to once again thank you for inviting me to join you here at this ceremony. I wish you all success as you work towards fighting the three diseases and improving the health of all Zimbabweans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Mark Eddington, for those remarks and the responses. Uh, the acknowledgement of the progress that this country has made and uh, the continued commitment that the Global Fund will make for as long as the grants are performing. We thank you for those remarks. I now hand over to Oscar Mdida to take us through the next stages of our proceedings. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Major General. I almost wanted to say Major General Brigadier General Kinji. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, now we are going to have the signing ceremony. Uh, we are going to have the four partners, the CCM represented by Dr. Alva Nandirza Senderai. We are going to have the two PRs, UNDP and Minister of Health. Minister of Health represented by Major General uh, Dr. Gerald Gwinji. And uh, we are also going to have uh, the Global Fund, represented by Mark Eddington. They have to come in front and um, go through this.